Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about explicit relative imports in Python, uh, and how they work, the syntax for them, and yeah, that's basically it. Also why I don't really use them. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. I guess we can also talk about, oops, there's my <laughs> list of videos. Um, we can also talk about like why you might want to use them as well. Uh, I guess we could start with that. So the, the first reason why relative imports, I think, can sometimes be a good idea is it makes it easier to vendor code uh, because you can move modules around without knowing the exact absolute import that would be required to import them. Um, so you could easily like stick them into some sub-module of your code and have them require no changes to be embedded. That said, I think that's a pretty weak argument to add them, and there's quite a few... Know, pitfalls to them, which I'll show later. Uh, mostly, it makes it harder to run code in some cases. And uh, man, the number of outages that I've seen at at previous companies caused by explicit relative imports is uh, is quite a lot. Uh, but anyway, let's let's get started. So in order to describe this, I'm gonna have to set up a module hierarchy. Uh, the first thing about explicit relative imports is they only work when when they're inside of a package. Uh, no, note that package in this terminology refers to a folder with an init.py in it. So uh, I guess, I think they work in namespace packages too. So maybe those work as well. Uh, but I'm specifically talking about a folder with Python source. Uh, but let's make uh, a slash b slash c, and then we are going to touch, oh, dang it. <laughs> I actually uh, uh, tried this out beforehand, so I thought I had the touch commands, but I did not. So we're gonna have to retype it all out, a slash b slash init.py. And so now we should have a structure that looks like this. Okay, cool. So inside this structure, I'm gonna create a few modules. Let's touch a slash b slash c. Uh, we'll make foo and bar dot pi. And I should really do a video about this, this special syntax. So what this actually does, just to show you here, it expands this out into multiple arguments. Um, quick little tip there. Um, but let's do a slash b slash c slash foo, uh, and we'll do a slash b slash c slash bar. Oh my goodness, why is that a tongue twister? Um, and I'm gonna do an explicit relative import from foo to bar. So let's say that x equals one. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to do a from import uh, but it's going to start with a dot. So whenever a from import starts with a dot, that means it's an explicit relative import. And we want to import the x from the bar module. So we're going to do from dot bar import x. And what this is going to say is look for a module named bar adjacent to me, so only one dot, and import the x. Now only one dot is a spoiler for later, but uh, got from bar. So that'll allow me to import this uh, from var. And if we run python dash m a dot b dot c dot foo, you'll see, oops, python three, of course, uh, you'll see that I'm able to do an explicit relative import without having to spell out the whole module path here. So typically if you're doing an absolute, a full absolute import, you would have instead written from a dot b, a dot b dot c dot var import x. And you'll see that that also works as well. Now, the reason that I say that, you know, explicit relative imports can be kind of tricky is because it requires you to run things as modules. If you're running them as scripts or using Python path, hackery, they're not going to work. So for instance, in this case, if I were to run Python 3 a slash b slash c slash foo dot pi, you'll get this relatively common error, uh, import error attempted relative import with no known parent package. Now. That sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo to, to me even. Um, but what it's trying to tell you is that you're not actually in a module here. So you're not in a package module. So if you were to look at the module name of this, it would be foo and not a.b.c.foo. And so the relative import system doesn't know what to do with that. Uh, whereas if you were up here where we did python dash m a.b.c.foo, the module name of the self module would be a dot b dot c dot foo. So it would know how to, you know, go up one one package level and import from there. Okay, so that's that's the first part about this. That's how to import a thing from a module. Uh, sometimes you actually want to just import the module itself, and that looks a little bit different, but follows the same rules. Uh, and it's kind of this weird syntax from dot import bar. 
So in this case, the module name is empty, and we are just importing bar from uh, relative to foo. So if we you know, now print bar here, you'll see that we get dash m. You'll see that we're able to import the entire module relatively. So that's kind of the two basic things that you would get there. I guess we can leave both of them in there. Uh, put both of those in there. So yeah, so we can import a thing out of bar or we can import the entire module itself. And depending on how your code is structured, you might want to import a whole module. But that's not the whole, the, the whole story here. Um, this dot can actually be repeated, and if you repeat it more times, it goes up additional levels. So let's actually put, um, uh, I don't know, a slash a dot pi, touch a slash b slash b dot pi, and touch, uh, well, actually, everything is in C. So now we can do a slash b slash foo dot pi. We can do from dot dot import b. So this will get the b module from two levels up, or you can do from dot 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 import a and that'll get import a and that'll get you those other modules uh, got b and got a so let's you do python 3 dash m a dot b dot c dot foo uh, oops i have a virtual envelope left over from the previous video <laughs> um and you can see here that we're able to import those those you know sub packages up above there um, by adding more and more dots here. And I think this syntax is awful. It's so hard to track down, you know, what this is actually referring to. Um, but I really don't recommend do this. There is there's a code base at a previous company that had all the way up to six dots in one of their things. Oh, and of course you can have sub modules here as well. So, but there was, there was an import that had six dots and it was just like, where is this code coming from? I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, my, my main reasons for not using it is it doesn't work as a script and it's really hard to know by reading the code where things are actually coming from. Um, and I find explicit absolute imports a lot easier to understand where the code lives. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's explicit relative imports. Hopefully this was helpful. Oh, I guess I should mention, the reason I say explicit relative imports is there is a feature slash bug in Python 2 uh, I guess it wasn't a bug. I think it was intentional. Uh, in Python 2, relative imports worked without explicitly saying that you needed to use this like dot syntax. So uh, in Python 2, if you remove this dot, it would automatically import this fine. You wouldn't have to do anything special. That was removed in Python 3 because it was really confusing. Um, but anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.